This is the Clipping Plane. Welcome to the Cody's D1NZ National Drifting Championship. A behind the scenes look into what's going on mid-season behind the drivers, the teams and all the action in D1NZ. The championship started at Manfield Manawatu. Close proximity corners, 5,000 people in attendance and one of the fastest drifting corners the championship sees. We saw Shane Van Gisbergen take on his first ever competition against Thanger Dan. What a battle it was. Look, the Rattler Motorsport Falcon does not lack for horsepower, doing everything he can to stick with the 2006 DK. Now what a competition debut by Shane Van Gisbergen, back bumper of the 2006 New Zealand champion. You can see both drivers just hard on the throttle there. Shane Van Gisbergen trying to stick to the dictator line. Thanger Dan showing his years of experience here, putting the pressure on the V8 supercar pilot. Ken Van Gisbergen holding his nice and tight on the inner apex. Thanger Dan though, what a veteran chase there. Puts the pressure on him. Thanger Dan will go through. Thanger Dan moving on through to the final battle with Kurt Whitaker. Thanger Dan Woolhouse is so hungry. He looks a man on a mission. He wants that title this year. Kurt Whitaker wants it as well. He's chasing hard, 65 cars, but what a mistake. Kurt Whitaker goes wide, too wide, and he's now on the grass. That pushes him out. That's a 10-0 to Thanger Dan. What a way to finish the day. Here we go, the big initiation. Kurt Whitaker on the lead. The Castro Edge Commodore on the chase. What a chase it is. Thanger Dan is coming in hard and fast. Well, was there contact there? Thanger Dan looks like his car is damaged. Are his round hopes dashed? He's off off the track. That will be a 10-0 to Kurt Whitaker, which makes it even. There's just not enough time. Clerk, of course, Dan t calls time on repairs. Controversy was all over it. End of the day, it's a judge sport. Kurt Whitaker went through to reign and get ultimate bragging rights at round one. Then it was on to the concrete jungles, Bay Park and Whangarei. Whangarei was unforgiving. Lots of crashes, lots of carnage, and more controversy with Gaz Wider and Kurt Whitaker again. Kurt Whitaker switches. My God, they hit. There is a contact there. Gaz Wider hits him again. Wow, this is going to be controversial. Gaz Wider, hand out the window. At the end of the day, Kurt Whitaker went through, but the ultimate winner, the one that didn't get it at round one, Thanger Dan Woolhouse. The Casio Edge Commodore, door to door, bumper to bumper action, New Zealand drifting at its finest, a slight slowdown there from Nico Reed. Huge advantage here to Thanger Dan Woolhouse. You couldn't wish for a better final look at this. Two of New Zealand's finest drifting talents on show. Thanger Dan Woolhouse absolutely hammering at home. He wants this victory. Nico Reed crests out the section. Thanger Dan Woolhouse. And we saw a young gun. Nico Reed on the podium for the first time. And then it was on to Bay Park, Mount Monganui, who opened their arms up and came out in their droves. Over 7,000 people, one of the biggest crowds and also one of the biggest crashes. Gaz White is suffering a huge mishap on turn two and eventually nearly riding off his car. But it's all good, Gaz Wider's car is repairable and you'll be seeing him at Hampton Downs in the coming round. Of course, the final battle once again, Fanger Dan Woolhouse in the Castro Edge Commodore and Andrew Redwood. Andrew Redwood in the FC Achilles RX7 coming of age this season, just missed out with a spin on the final corner. Dan reigning supreme bragging rights on the new venue for Bay Park Tauranga. However, this round we catch up with the defending champion Kurt Whitaker in the Autoshore R34 and see about his championship. Kurt Whitaker um, from Auckland, New Zealand, and uh, I drive a R34 2JZ Skyline. Now that you've got the number one in your car, um, I think you've really got a target on your head. It's proven that already. Um, halfway, you know, we're halfway through the season, um, and we've had a few controversial, you know. Uh, rounds, uh, but you've, you've got to take what you know what comes at you. We've been in the sport a long time. We've had a lot of hard calls gone against us, in, you know, in the past. But you don't see us dwelling on it. You know, you, you've got to pick yourself up and carry on. Manfield is an awesome track. It's it's a really nice flowing track. It's quite fast. It's um, it, it is really you know good fun, and I really really do enjoy it. Kurt Whitaker to go through the top four. 
Redwood has been on, on, on form all year. And you know, when I seen we were up against him, top 16, I was like, well, this could be us. Bottom eight um, out already in the first round. But uh, unfortunately, he, he made a mistake. Okay, just mashing the throttle, trying to make as much smoke as possible, make it as difficult for Andrew Redwood to see as he can. Redwood tucks right up on the rear, but he corrects himself. And that sly mistake from Redwood's going to push Kurt Whitaker through. Top eight it is. Tracks with walls, yeah, that's, um, you know, it is quite daunting. It's, uh, it's quite tough for a lot of guys and it's quite hard to get your head around it, you know? And really, you've got to know your car, you've got to be comfortable in your car, and you've just got to go out there and give it all and, and you know, not worry about hitting it. And that's what you'll find. Guys that are out there, they, they don't want to hit it, but hey, they may. But most of the time, if you're not worried about those walls, you won't hit them. Bay Park was, uh, obviously, it was a new event. It was um, probably suited to a, to a V8 or, or, you know, someone with a bit, bit of low down torque. Uh, we struggled a bit off the line, we kept getting left behind off the line, whether or not that was my driving, myself, or, or purely we just couldn't get, we couldn't get the grip to the ground. Uh, so you lose a length, two car lengths, before you even get to the judge section, then uh, it's going to be really hard to pull it in. You can't expect to go up against anyone in that top 16 and expect to beat them. Uh, they're all just as hungry as what um, you are, you know, and, um, and obviously there's some standouts and some guys that you've got to worry about when you do come up against them, especially earlier on in the, in the top 16. Yeah, well this is going to be big, New Zealand versus Aussie. Myself being New Zealand number one versus um, Rob White being um, Aussie number one. You know, we've been over there two years and, uh, and really, you know, um, giving them a good go on their home turf, but it's going to be good uh, to see, you know, uh, Rob come over here and, uh, and give it a go over here. Who is that guy in the Roly R33? Zach Pohl, the guy from Auckland who has come out of nowhere in his first ever D1 Pro Championship. The rookie taking it on and beating a round two Mad Mike with it and nearly poping it with Shane Van Gersbergen and Fang it in round three. So let's take a look at Zach Pohl and his R33, the newcomer to the D1 Pro season and how he's got to where he is. Zach Pohl is driving out of his skin this weekend. He's been so close to that wall. He was number seven in qualifying. He threw down, he took out Mad Mike Would it Look at him gliding along that wall. Zach Pohl is a man on a mission this weekend. And oh, Clock hits the wall! And that's at the clock. I'm Zach Pohl, I'm from Auckland, New Zealand, and I drive a R33 1996, 600 horsepower. So I guess uh, the drifting kind of thing, I was sort of lurking around grassroots days and testing the car and chopping the car up and just trying to get it to where I wanted it to be. Um, I didn't really want to make much of an impact on the scene until I knew the car was like perfect. Uh, and that's, that's what I did. Uh, I got it to the point where I really wanted it, where I felt it was you know, um, good for competition. And um, just took the leap into D1. Um, been pretty, pretty scary. Uh, a lot of learning, a lot of hard work. Um, but so far, so good. We're really enjoying it and uh, we seem to be doing all right. Oh, to be honest, I feel quite privileged um, to get to that level, you know. Um, but it's 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 good too because you know you're up against someone who's got a lot of experience. They can drive well, um, and you you know they're going to be pushing hard, so you can follow their you know follow how they drive. Um, what I, the difference between the sort of when I was in the rookie once uh, and the pros was, um, you know, the, the, the pros you can really trust their driving, so you can get up to them as close as you can, and you know they're going to be all good but the uh, rookies are a little bit all over the place and you've got to be a bit careful. I think in terms of my position now, I've got a slight advantage over the top guys because no one really knows how I drive. Um, so, I mean, you know, they, they follow me, they don't know what to expect, um, but when I follow these guys, I, mean, you've see, I see them on TV and on YouTube and stuff all the time, so I know sort of their general driving style and I can sort of try and mimic that as best as I can. Yeah, beating guys like Mad Mike and stuff is, is you know, it's quite, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a lift. Um, it's, but then again, when you're up against guys like that, you get more pumped. You know, you, you know you got to perform. You, you're there to, you're there to win. You know, like you, you put thousands of hours and dollars into the car and hard work, and you've got 30 seconds to pull it off. So, so you, you just got to, you know, do it. If you don't do it, you're wasting your time. How about that, folks? 
Uh, best battle uh, down there, oh, Shane Van Gisburg was quite good. Um, tricky driver to come against. He, um, he as, and on his chase, he, he spun. Uh, on the lead, he slowed me right up to the point where I almost straight lined, um, and that gets quite hard you know, when, you, when, you, when you're dealing with that sort of stuff. But um, we didn't really have, I mean, we only had the two battles down there. I, I don't have any issue with them at all. I mean, I, I feel the car through my body, just wherever it is. I feel the white lines on the track, everything. So I know where the car sits, I know where it is on the track. Um, so it was just a matter of getting the line right and um, pushing as hard as we could. Um, coming up against guys like Fanger, um, he's just he's just too perfect every time. So we're constantly, you know, like he he is the the role model at the moment to uh, to mimic really. I always try to th throw a bit of my own sort of style into the driving, um, but a bit more aggression, kind of. I mean, being along a wheelbase R33, you really got to throw it around, um, and but it looks quite cool when you pull it off. And, She's rough. And my car is rough as. I mean, it's taken to the grinder everywhere. There's nothing left of it. Um, and it's just, as I say, function over form all day. I mean, it's just what it comes down to, yeah. yeah. And drifting, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the end of the season, I'd like to be sitting in the top six. Um, that would be sort of my you know, ideal position. Um, and I think we could probably pull it off from where we are now, so long as we don't have any mechanical difficulties and I just keep my head straight. Um, as, I mean, a lot of it, as I said before, is down to just keeping your head straight and, and keeping the nerves down and, and just pulling off, doing what you need to do, not you know over overdoing runs and qualifying and, and just getting just, just working it through the system. So if we can do that um, and, and the car's running fine, uh, I think we'll be good. So the gloves are off as the championship fight heats up. It's all going down at March the 1st and 2nd, Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. New Zealand vs Australia, Kurt Whitaker, Rob White. The V8 Legends vs the Drift Legends. And of course, the championship fight. Hampton Downs, it's, um, it's quite suited to any car there. It's, it's not uh, a V8 or a turbo or a, a small or a big car track. Um, it, it's very even across the field. It would be good to get back on the track after Concrete Wall Jungle because um, we're getting a bit of sucker fix and dent. <laughs> In the meantime, catch all the action from Tauranga Bay Park Round 3 on CRC's Motorsport TV3. We'll see you at Hampton Downs.